And we do have to get back to what somewhere I keep. What's it called? Somewhere they were somewhere making villain. diamonds, diamond dust for us. Yes, so we have to yeah. get back there to get that diamond dust so I can heal us all. Who here still has soul damage? How many do I need? Um, I do. I I still have soul damage. Anderson does. Anderson's always gonna have soul damage. I don't know. Is how it to just it's, 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 it's you? It's you, Anderson, and Claw. No, not Claw. And Claw. I, and I, uh, no? Matt. Yeah. Same one. Okay. I believe I bl I bl I believe Kenneth has. Uh, one person's been healed. I think. Uh, Marrow healed Claw. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's three of us left. I can do that, no problem. And then what else are we what are we still looking for for the ritual? Um, I can cover that in the recap for you guys. I got a list of I'm your also just ongoing planning. quests. Okay. I'll give it to you I now. Think I can um, too. So your ongoing quests, uh you have removed the death miss. Um, in order to remove the death miss, you guys have decided to uh, cast a spell called Dissolve Planar Tether. Um Best Quo is making it for you. Uh, if you supply her with the materials, you have the Bridgestone. Um, the, the next two things you guys need, you need, uh, or the next three things you guys need, a Creation Circle, which requires one Rye Crafter from every element, uh, a total of six people, a Empowered Earth Fire Flame. Um, also, Andrea we'll right back. I gotta do something. Okay, has messaged you guys that she has a lead for that, and she's currently chasing it with Kai Peldon. Um, a season stone, uh, which uh, I don't know if I've given you guys any information on that. Uh, the next quest you have after removing the death mist is to find Asu Andrea's real body, as her soul is literally exploding out of her new um, of form, uh, material form. Uh, Anderson has a quest to find a cure for Millis. Uh, Claw has a quest to uh, find a cure for lycanthropes born with the curse. Uh, addendum to that, he doesn't want to do that through Fian Ira Alla. Um, and uh, Claw has a side quest to convince druids to help plants in the world. Stradora has a quest to cleanse Stormbreak. She is waiting on more information from the Daughters of Gendwai. Uh, Bess Quo wants the notes on Aussie's birth, uh, which you guys do have in your possession. Um, and I have a note for Zeke, but I was pretty sure you guys are done with everything for him. I don't remember what that is. I just, it's literally Zeke. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Outside of the fact we haven't technically collected our reward for that, we yeah. finished the business with him. Yeah, I'm just going to mark that quest as done. So yeah, uh, remove the death miss, find Oswe Andrea's real body, find a cure for Millis, find a cure for lycanthropes born with the curse, uh, cleanse Stormbreak, and deliver the notes on Ossie's birth to Besquo. Okay. So on the season stone that we need to find, um, would y'all help pitch in for... Uh, incense and ivory so I could cast legend lore and we could figure out about it. Yeah, sure. I, I'd be willing to help pitch in with my money. If Claw has money, Claw has money. I uh, spent most of his money on other shite. Uh, so points. We need loot points. That is true point. Sure. That is true so points. I yes. think we could do a legend lore to get some info on the season stone. We can travel back to Somar Villa and collect our rewards. We can all get healing. I can try How to talk to druids. Blue points? Do we need? Um, it's incense uh, worth two hundred and fifty gold. Can I yes. pull you into a side channel? Yes. Okay. Ah. Uh. What did I do wrong? You haven't done anything I'm wrong. I'm going to time out. You're not going to time out. <laughs> yet uh let's see i'll pick uh, up here hey uh can you hear me yes um are you uh trying to be deceitful with your party and keep loot for yourself no. um okay because I, I mean that is something you can um uh, some people play dnd that way um no. in that case i'm I'll remind you with the rest of the group. Uh, I'm going to move you back to the rest of the group. 
Um, I do want to remind you, Insomni, uh, all of those gemstones from the display cases you nabbed are in look incredibly valuable to notice. You don't know how much yeah, each of those are Yeah, but they're sparkly and shiny, so I just wanted to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, see, that's what I that's what I was asking up above. Why oh no, I wasn't thinking about them. I just you have in my them. mind, I just ripped them off as random shiny stones. I guess I should look into selling those, and then I might be able to afford. Them. Uh, Ooh, I, will, I, could maybe I will give you. I will give you a um, dungeon master uh, to player pin that was loot from loot rooms in the dungeon. Um, yeah, I remember. Depending on how you get them uh, identified and valued, uh, that's worth anywhere between six thousand to ten thousand gold. All right, never yeah, mind. I was Change planning plans. for you guys to sell them and split them up. I still Change have the value of, of plants. We take the gems, get them appraised, sell them, buy the stuff for legend lore, and then split the money. So I, I'm sitting here listening. I'm like, oh, you guys can plan. I was like, she's I got just, like a bajillion gold in her. Pouch. I mean, like and the only time I've been deceitful is when no one's Right, right. It's like, like, hey, can you guys all go in, like, have these, or forgot. you know, can we all pitch in for dinner tonight? And then it's like, then it's like, then shows up with like. <laughs> a Lambo <laughs> with gold plated like clothes. And we're over here like <laughs> sweatpants eating at a McDonald's. Like what's the point? What? We buy this stuff for legend lore so I can figure out about the season stone for y'all. Then we split the remaining money between Lovis so is like, hey guys, I need some money. Why? I got I got an idea. Wait, what about your stones? But they're really shiny. <laughs> Look at them. They're so shiny. <laughs> All right. Um, are you all ready to get uh, started? Sort uh, of. I'm. I guess I. I still don't know what dream or memory claw is going for. Uh, let me relook over your list. Uh, I had. I had something I was going to do tonight with this. Um. So I will ask that you just trust me, and uh, and if you're not satisfied, be true to your character, and we'll figure it out. Okay, you know what? I'll trust you. All right, um, let's rock this pig. Uh, we're not kicking it; we're rocking it gently, side to side. So we're putting it to sleep. Got it. Yeah. Or, no, we're getting it energized to go through its day. I don't know, when I rock my dogs, they always, like, start whimpering and want to run around. Okay, uh, hello and welcome to the Ilderon Tales. Uh, this is the Nobles um, Saga 2, episode 58 of their campaign. Uh, we are chugging through. And inching closer to uh, something big and epic, and what that big and epic thing is, we'll figure it out when we get there. If you are new to the channel, we are playing in a homebrewed world of our own creation. It is the world of Ilderon. There is a wiki, there is a website. You can read all about it and uh, dive into all the little fantastic corners that we have created. And... If you're unfamiliar with the system, we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, everything you're going to see is live role playing and live storytelling. Um, uh, some of my favorite D&D podcasts, they kind of do like mock sessions um, before they do a recording. So, you know, the players can kind of like really get a feel for like what's happening and how their characters might move through this situation. Um, the thing that we do differently than anyone <laughs> in this situation is nobody knows how anything's gonna go here. Sometimes you have a session where you got a really cool quest hook lined up for a character's family and you reorganize like all the aspects of the lower level campaign and you bring in a really cool NPC who's been reincarnated as an immortal elf and then the party's in Galkin. <laughs> Cause that just happens. <laughs> Uh, but other times, I don't know, we just show up and have fun. So we're going to do that tonight. Um, if you're under the age of 14, please stop and talk to your parents. Uh, do a very quick recap because we're working with short time tonight. Um, last session took place on the 
third of artists the party was headed to um milmar uh village or milmar village while they were waiting for their diamond dust to be ground down um did i don't think you guys teleported there i think you guys walked there initially and then teleported out of uh, when the party got there they saw that there was a massive um demonic creature uh and some sort of um, humanoid mash with um, an insectoid that had destroyed a large part of the um, forest leading up to the village. Uh, something had uh, killed it, and the party went to check on the village. In the village, they found um, Claw's old uh, rival, um, Sinsoul? Uh, yeah, Sinsoul. Um, and Sinsoul had been reincarnated as a elven woman. Uh, Sinsoul was learning magic and using her magic to heal um, Adenaean, who is the uh, Ira Alla that Claw sent to Milmar Village earlier in the campaign. Um, Adenaean went in, uh, went or went to send word that uh, Claw and everyone was back um, before uh, any officials, um, Kiro or Fang, could be uh, reached. Uh, people from the village came and started complaining about their uh, the general civic issues uh, going on with the settlement. Um, the of uh, Myth, the death myth over the world has uh, reacted very strangely with the Druid Grove, um, preventing uh, most uh, of most of the uh, more difficult issues. However, there is still a problem with the natural water resources in town, um, and everybody has to drink from barrels or imported sources of water as uh, things keep disappearing in the well and. Um, people keep getting grabbed in the river. Uh, the party investigated the well and found that somehow one of those extra planar spaces that have been happening through uh, puddles and um, bodies of water was somehow permanently open. Um, as they explored further, they found there was a um, collector on the other side using some strange device to keep the... Um, to keep the uh, connection open, and he was uh, taking everything that fell into the well. Uh, the party attacked him, and after some back and forth, they found out that that particular um, that that particular uh, opening led to Providence, and that they couldn't manifest fully in Providence, and their essence was fading. Um, very quickly, they traded with the collector and they rushed back um, through, well, no, not through the portal because uh, Nomis accidentally closed it, rushed through another portal, um, returning to Ilderon. Uh, in their trades, um, they parted with some religious artifacts and they uh, received a tuning fork uh, tuned for a plane of spiritual water known as Kaimanaji. Uh, from there, they jumped through um, another uh, portal and they found themselves in uh, the town, not of, of Misshaven, in uh, Low Lakes. Um, the party wandered uh, from the lake they had um, been transported into. Uh, through empty streets, courtyards, and docks into the uh, monastery. Uh, the monastery missing uh, tons of people. It almost seems like a ghost town in uh, Miss Haven. Um, and they were greeted... Uh, oh, no, they weren't greeted coldly. They were greeted warmly uh, by a lady praying to a regional god known as Talakwin. Um, oh, right, no, she, I think we're the chosen ones or something. Yeah, she asked Talakwin to send a sign of the Trial of Waves starting, and you all emerged from the lake and uh, came um, telling her uh, you had uh, dealings from Providence. So 
Um, with that, she took you to the monastery and fetched the Asitar of the um, of the tribe or of the Yandar. And uh, while you all were waiting for the Asitar to come, uh, the iconic reason why people come to the Jari Death Monastery is um, for their exceptional rye crafters, uh, water rye crafters uh, specifically, and their ability to explore memories and um, to learn through experience or to teach through giving people the opportunity to have experiences to learn. Uh, she put each of you into a deep meditative trance um, that you could explore your memories with water rye crafting. Um, and she went to fetch the Asitar. The other part of the party uh, learned that uh, the other half of the party slipped onto the other side of the world. You went, all went and grabbed your mentor and teleported uh, all the way to Miss Haven. Um, Namiser uh, told you guys that you should be quick in Miss Haven, and she might not be welcome here. Uh, from there, uh, you guys talk to the Asitar, who is a woman named Ahuik, and uh, and you told her that your companions had shown up to the monastery uh, before Ahuik could dismiss your claims. Um, Liana Kaolin had sh uh, came to her and uh, told her of the travelers that had just come to the monastery and how they were a uh, celestial sign from Tilakwin. Uh The party was then uh, brought and reunited um, all together. Uh, one thing that I do want to say for individual characters that do or don't have knowledge of this, um, the uh, As Asitar of um, the Jari Death Monastery had specifically said they had cut their ties um, with the mercenaries of the region and uh, the Silver Sigil, and the Jari Death Monastery is returning to its true purpose and is not a layer of operations for um, those individuals seeking to use it as a planning base. Uh, we know it's a Silver Sigil, don't we? Uh, I don't know how many dealings this I... group's had with the Silver Sigil. I mean, I don't think we have any dealings, but we, I think they said that it was a silver we're, sigil. We're vaguely aware that Reyna's one of them. Yeah, yeah. Ahuik straight up told you guys, we don't deal with the silver sigil anymore. The uh, teleportation circle that, um, that, uh, Namiser used for you guys that she took you to the monastery looks like it hasn't been used. Um, in some time. Uh, that said, uh, you all are in uh, Galkin in Miss Haven, and please tell me I imported this page. I did not import this page. Uh, we'll we'll just use this page for now, and I might build um, a Miss Haven page later if we need it. Um, you all are in uh, Galkin. You are in the country of, or the nation of Low Lakes. Uh, let's do this one in red. Uh, you are in the nation of Low Lakes in the city of Miss Haven at the Jari Death Monastery. You are in one of the open cloisters of the monastery, staring at your party members. Uh, it is the third of artists um, in the afternoon, and uh. I said we were going to pick up with memories, but uh, I'm actually going to start off this session. So, ah! <laughs> yeah, normally this is where I'd ask, what do you guys want to do? But you don't get to make decisions. Oh, uh, I might be doing a lot of talking tonight. I will try my best to not take all of the session, though. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of how tonight's session is structured. Uh, Ahuik is going to um, step into the cloister um, where Claw, uh, Anderson, and Nomis are each surrounded by that mist. Um, and I need a die. Uh, 
I spent all this time getting ready. I get my dice bag right next to me, and the first time I got a roll, I have no idea where it is. Oh, here it is. Yeah, that, that seems to be how it goes. That's just how the dice roll sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's just how the dice disappear sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sometimes the universe just needs to remind you that you're not the one in control. <laughs> Don't remind me. All right. Um, so, uh, Ahuik is going to uh, step into the uh, courtyard and she is going to um, gesture to the uh, three individuals surrounded by the uh, mist uh, and say, if they are messengers of Talakwin, uh, I wish to know the message that they bring. I will explore one's thoughts, I will speak with uh, another, and I will allow another to make a case. Uh, she's going to step forward uh, to Claw um, and wave the mist uh, from him, uh, bringing him out of the cloud of thoughts. Uh, Oh, I just like the idea of like going into Anderson's like head empty, no thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need them to go through Claw's brain because they aren't touching mine. Oh, um, you're going through mine. I just don't know what they'll find. At no, which point they might find him. Uh, Claw, you there return. Fire... <laughs> you return to consciousness. Bathrobe. Um, there is a Milserian woman standing over you. Uh also standing in the courtyard now uh joining you is uh Nemeiser, Sigmund, Stradora, uh Kenneth um and of course the woman you met before uh Liana um they are each watching you uh Ahuik is going to lean down and or is going uh, to kneel down and say you bring celestial tidings I wish to know of your experiences. That's fine. I Yes, we did interact with the Celestial. Although, it might not be the exact one that you would be expecting. We found the god of homeless men. <laughs> um, <laughs> we kinda did! <laughs> Patron Saint, even. We found the afterlife pawn shop. Uh, she's going to say... Ahuit, um, oh. Asatar of the Misyandar. My family name is simply Mistar. I am one of the many orphans uh, raised by the tribe. Claw Estrai. You can go through my memories if you wish, if that's what we'll go through. I'll try to recount it as best as I can. Uh, she is going to uh, shake her head and say, No, if you are a messenger of Talakwin, I will have you speak uh, with his emissaries. Should the trial of waves uh, truly be begun, um, you will bring back uh, that message for us. Hmm. Okay. He does have... I... Oh, boy. Confusion. Speak. I'm... Uh, Claw. Mm -hmm. She is going to um, stand up and she begins casting a spell. Oh. Uh, It takes uh, an entire minute um, as winds uh, begin uh, circling or circling her. Uh, the mist um, swirls around her, and after a minute of channeling the spell, she directs her hand towards you. Uh, it all sweeps around you, uh, blowing you um, away, uh, all of your physical form. Uh, you. Are a cloud. Oh. Oh god. Claw's tripping. <laughs> uh, you can see everyone in front of you. Um, 
you can see all of the uh, you can see the courtyard you were just in. Um, there is nothing remaining of your physical form. Uh, also, as clouds with you are both uh, Mango and um, Lambert. I forget the three cigars name. Lambert. Lambert. Yeah. Uh, the three of you are a swirl of the clouds. Um, Ahuik is going to say, "Dance among the heavens." If Tlaquin uh, truly wishes the trial to begin, uh, you will be our sign of it. Okay. I guess I'll try to start heading towards the sky and trying to see if I can find Tlaquin. Okay. Uh, you guys are going to see a uh, swirl of clouds uh, drift away. Um Namiser is gonna try and identify that spell because she's supposed to protect you and this lady just banished you to uh, the shot or the spirit realm um Namiser is uh gonna say what type of druid walk is that you turned him into win or what type of druid spell is that you turned him into win uh Ahuik is going to uh, say uh, it, will, it will last for hours and uh, his uh, spiritual form is fine and he can return to his body when he chooses. She's going to look up at Claw drifting away. Um, is she religious? I guess she's just going to pray. Uh, the Meister's gonna start mumbling to herself. Uh, next! Um, let's see. Evans, Anderson, Odds, Nomis. Uh, I don't mind letting Nomis go first. Nope. I would love for you to go first, Anderson. <laughs> no, I <laughs> you go first. Ahuik is going to walk up to Anderson. Um, I win. And she is going to kneel, uh, putting her hand uh, through the miss. Um, she is going to say, come, uh, let us explore uh, what these, uh, what this mind knows. Oh, you might be getting more than you bargained for. Yikes. <laughs> um, Ahuik uh, sits down next to Anderson um, as she puts her hand into your uh, into the mess uh, it expands around her um, Liana is going to come and sit uh, with Ahuik uh, if anyone else wants to they are welcome to someone go I'll go. Supervise. I'll go. <laughs> yeah, no, you can explore the messed up memories of Martlin. <laughs> I'll <Yeah>. go. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. <laughs> All right, Kenneth, you uh, sit down in the uh, mess with um, Liana and Ahuit. Yes. Oh. Uh, no, I want to see the mess that I. I want to see the mess of Mayan Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's we, just, we, we both. We it's, both speak. We both speak primordial. It's, it's gotta just, come from somewhere. Two cats with, um, <laughs> like the uh, not tambourines, but the the big hi hat, uh, drum things. I forget what they're called. The bells. Yeah, <laughs> just banging them together. Two cats with pots, just banging them together. That's Anderson's entire brain. Huh. <laughs> Not what I expected. <laughs> and Martlin standing in the background, just face bombing. <laughs> yeah, this is not uh, what I expected. <laughs> no, I kid, I kid. Um. Okay, uh, you sit down. Um, it takes a second for the uh, mist to swirl around you, uh, blurring out the rest of your surroundings. Uh, Anderson. Hey. You sent me a message last night um, of did. what Anderson was trying to explore. Um, I told you guys you could uh, relive 
through any of your memories and I would explain them in um, vivid detail, expecting things that were happened in this campaign. And I would do my best to uh, give you guys notes and stuff on it from my notes. But instead, you sent me something else. Uh, will you tell everybody what Anderson is sifting through and trying to find in his mind? Well, so the first thing Anderson thinks back to, because he, he's kind of been hung up on it since he saw it, but he hasn't really found a good opportunity to bring it up, and Martlin doesn't seem to want to talk about it, is I want to go back to, mostly because now it's in my memory. I made a copy of it in my head. Um, I want to go back to the memory of watching that god get turned to stone, or into the stone, getting murdered and turned into a stone. Wasn't it god's daughter? I assume she was at least a demigod. I assume she was a god too, but <laughs> it was Amira's daughter. Okay. That's like the um, first memory I go to. Yeah. Um and then you had Yikes. explained you wanted to like go deeper. Uh with that I wanted one. to go down the rabbit hole of basically sifting through memories that involve that stone. Okay. Uh, I specifically want to try to track that stone throughout time within the memories. Okay. See. Um, and the ultimate, player-wise, the ultimate goal is I kind of want to try to figure out where it is, roughly. You can, like, just steal it down Anderson's just curious, but also feels it's important. All right. Oh, uh, let's go with this. But, you know, so, I, want, I want everyone to come in, and we're going to watch a god's daughter get stoned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to go into vivid detail uh, for this one just because we got more to cover tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but as you all remember, um, Anderson specifically is watching uh, and and I'll set up the memory and you tell me where Anderson is in this uh, memory. Um, Anderson is watching um, Calfier, Martlin, and uh, that weird uh demi uh demi goddess um that looks like half dryad half uh human um they are uh standing in a river and um Kelfier has uh the demi goddess paralyzed with a spell uh martlin looks uncomfortable at this and uh, it says Kelfier, you're going too far at which point Kelfier says, no, we need this. This is the final piece. Imagine what we could do with it. Um, at which point uh, Kelfier completes the rest of his spell. Uh, this demigoddess, um, her form seems to uh, blur and then crack as um, the cracks then fold in on themselves uh her entire form shifts and and compresses into a small gemstone uh at which point Kelfier steps forward and picks up uh where is anderson um i imagine in anderson this? do i have a separate body to martlin or am i just in uh i so the way these these memories work uh you get to see the entire experience you can be in the experience from anybody's perspective or watching as a third party okay i i will be watching as a third party and i specifically i will walk up to um to calfier kind of staring at the stone as my gaze does not leave it i'm just focusing on it and i look deeper and deeper into the stone almost like i'm in a trance and okay. um, try to focus on it. Um, everybody else is going to join uh, this memory. Um, you all can watch uh, Anderson um, staring and inspecting this stone. Uh, and by everyone else, I mean Kenneth, Ahuik, and Liana. Uh, at which point... Um, Anderson, as you 
stare at the stone. It looks like a very unrefined version of something you've seen before. A image flashes in your mind um, of those uh, weird cut stones that um, the weird cut stones that uh, Eshes, uh had showed you guys once um, when he was explaining uh, how uh, how Oswandria came to possess a piece of Calfir's soul. Oh, uh, as those as the image of those stones um, flash in your mind, uh, you um, recall several more memories with this stone. Uh, leading to a cosmic landscape um, with uh, eight figures um, standing around the stone. Okay. This is just kind of cosmic space. This is not really anywhere in particular. Oh, you can explore that memory if you wish to. I will attempt to, yes. Okay. Uh, as you try and dive deeper, searching into uh, memories of the of this stone, um, the mist is going to uh, consume uh, this river. Um, and uh, from the river, the entire world kind of warping and shifting uh, and you landing again in this uh, cosmic space. Uh, has Anderson been here before? Uh, Anderson, as you look around at the sky, um, the endless sea that you're standing on, the sea re reflecting all of the stars and the burning world uh, behind you, um, very quickly you realize this is the bridge uh, standing in front of you uh, is uh, Calfier uh, Calgarin um, and Martlin uh, Marias uh, crying next to him uh, between both of them is this stone uh, surrounded um, are uh, the different uh, greater deities of Ilderon. Um, for the most part, you can make out uh, Renolta as she is depicted in um, various different religions. Uh, the others, I would have to get a history check or a religion check from you um, at um... Uh, various levels for each of them and how obscure or strange they are if I mean, you want to I guess, i'm trying to analyze i'm trying to get as much as i can out of this so i'll i'll try it i'll do history um, okay uh kenneth uh you also watch this whole uh space shift and find yourself in this new memory am i also able to roll the history check to see if i recognize um who they are yeah if you want to? You're witnessing the same thing Anderson is. Uh, do I just uh, make one, or do I need to make, like, one for each one? Um, so all of them are at different tiers. Give me one check, and based on what you get, I'll give you the uh, ones you recognize. Okay. Ooh, not great. <laughs> Alright. Um... So, I'll, I will count up uh, for you all, uh, Anderson, you uh, pick out uh, some of the more often depicted gods. Uh, Renalta, there are three, or there are two other echoes of her um, form shifting uh, behind her. Um, you have heard the god goes by many faces and uh, many different names. Um, but you can assume all three of them are uh, some aspect of her. Uh, you are also able to uh, pick out a greater version of uh, that uh, demigod. It um, 
It is a, a uh, tall woman. Uh, the forest is melded with her uh, body. Um, every part of her life, or every part of her uh, form springs with growth. Um, you recognize this as the avatar of Alilia. It is Amira, um, also known as the living avatar. Uh, these other ones you don't actually uh, recognize. Um, Kenneth, you are going to uh, do just as good as um, Anderson. Um, recognizing both Amira and Renalta. Uh, but Kenneth, you are also going to jump uh, for a second. Um, there are very few depictions of Gendouai still in the world. Uh, Gendouai is standing in this uh, circle of gods um, that is uh, judging Kalfir. Uh, the other two you are unfortunately not going to recognize um they are ancient gods that you have uh not seen any um modern depictions of uh as you all are watching this scene um finally uh one of these gods is going to, uh, or no, Martlin is going to speak up. Uh, Martlin is crying, and he's going to say, I told you, you went too far. Uh, Kalfir, um is paralyzed, unfortunately, by the same spell uh, that uh, he had cast on the demigoddess before. Uh, Emra or Amira is going to speak up and say this one has delved into magic that shouldn't exist in Ilderon. He uh, he toys with things that uh, should only uh, be wielded by uh, our matron. Uh Renalta is going to speak up and say, but we have a duty that we have sworn to her each um, to shepherd her creations in a different way. Nonetheless, this is one of her creations. Uh, one of the figures um, that you guys do not recognize, he has, uh, he has a um, mask or he has a uh, crown over his head uh, that uh, gives him the appearance of a uh, bird. Uh, he speaks, and the mask moves with him. He's going to say, But when justice is deserved, it should be dealt. I am inclined to agree with our sister on this one. A punishment, um, unlike any other, uh, needs to be delivered. Um, oh, you all do recognize um, one of these other figures here. Uh, it's strange, but uh, a rainbow luminescent force uh, behind her, um, if her skin was more um, tan and pigmented, you all would recognize, uh, let's see, um, Anna uh, Estelle. Oh. Um, she is going to speak up and say, uh, I only speak as the lawgiver currently, but I can prepare a special prison for him in my tower. Um, at which point Renalta is going to shake her head and say, that would require a new contract um, and power that I'm not willing to give you. Uh, Anna is going to nod. Um, Amira is going to say, we should do, uh, we should do what he did uh, to my daughter. Um, Gendwai finally speaks up and says, it's far too cruel a fate. He is mortal. His curiosity, unfortunately, has gotten the best of him. 
We should seek our matron's judgment in this matter. Uh, joining um, this council of gods, uh, you all are going to see uh, two people um, moving through the stars. Uh, there's a woman with a hair, a head of shifting white and red hair, and a, uh, another being um, that I don't know if I want to go into all of uh, Alavion's uh, description, but you guys have not seen her uh, before. Uh, it is another being. Um, she has uh, four arms um, and a, a mane of hair around her neck. Um, what you would expect to be wings on her back uh, is instead a cloak that uh, drapes down to her legs. Um, she is, uh, impossibly taller than all of the other gods, uh, here, uh, and the drape of, uh, the drape of her wings, um, that forms a cloak of, you see a entirely different star system, uh, within them, um, wavering and rippling, uh, against the cosmic background that you're already in. Uh, as these two join the conversation um the other gods are going to bow uh alilia uh is going to speak up and say i know of this one he is a calgarin uh martlin is going to um, look up tears in his eyes and say please mercy uh, she's going to nod and say his actions are not his own his bloodline cursed from the moment he drew his first breath uh, bound um, to the first lord of all demons Fianthros bring him forth uh, Alavion is going to nod um the moth woman moves her cloak over uh Calfier. um you guys see uh Calfier's form uh rip apart um you see him uh almost pull into uh two different people and uh threads of uh black uh, liquid um, holding the two people together. Uh, Alabion is going to stop uh, letting the two people merge again. She's going to say their essence is interwoven with one another so powerfully that if I was to recreate one, I would have to recreate both. They are stained in a way that makes each of them something new. Uh, Alilia is going to nod and say, do it. Uh, Alavion uh, moves her cloak back over uh, Calfir. Um, as the uh, two uh, people are ripped apart, um, the second one uh, merges, or forms into a form of, uh, it has red skin and cloven hooves. Uh, it looks very similar uh, to a more demonic version of a uh, tiefling. Uh, Kalfir, however, stops moving as he goes unconscious. Um, both of them have thousands, possibly uh, millions, or possibly hundreds of thousands of tiny silvery threads uh, pulling in every direction. Uh, Alavion is going to look at each of them and say, I have not encountered this. They are bonded to more, and more are bonded to them. What have you done? Uh, 
Martlin is going to look up and say, we tried to fix problems that we created. We changed the tethers and bindings of hundreds of soldiers so that the monster we made couldn't consume them. They are bonded to this demon, perhaps eternally. A curse passed down through blood just like the Calgarans. I can remake uh, them. I can remake these two, but alas, um, she gestures to the demon. I will remake all those uh, that are bonded to it. Lilia is going to exhale and says, the punishment that I've decided for them is one equal to the crimes that they have committed. Uh, the bonds will stay, but disassemble the soul. Each strand of the fire, each essence that makes it up, uh, shall never again be a part of Ilderon. Uh, Alevion is going to uh, shudder and say, My matron, I do not have such power. But the chorus of us do. Uh, the other gods nod. Um, at which point they all raise their hand and the two beings are going to uh, become undone. Uh, shattering into uh, 10, well, actually 20 of uh, these different stones. Uh, Martlin is going to say, <laughs> but it wasn't his fault. We tried. We tried. Uh Alilia is going to walk towards Martlin uh, and say, yes, and we've given him a chance to redeem uh, himself. The actions he committed uh, were not his own. They were influenced by that demon. His consciousness, though, uh, it is that that would be judged should he seek um, entrance or rest into Providence. Martlin's going to say, then reassemble him. Please let us go back. Let us try again. Let him try again. Uh, she's going to nod and say, between the chorus of us, no binding is beyond us. And upon this, you and I agree, which we have done. Uh, Martlin is going to say, I don't understand. He's back? She's going to nod and say, his consciousness, yes, given form, a chance to make decisions of his own independently. <sighs> Let me go to him. She's going to shake her head and say, you have. You are him, and you have failed. Uh, Martlin is going to say, what? What? When given the chance, independent of that, of Fianthros influence, you are not a voice uh, loud enough to dissuade yourself from his uh, temptations. With or without that demon, this is where his road led. Uh, Martlin is going to look shattered, looking at the stones on the ground. Uh, Amira is going to say, Finally, we've done this dance. Let me punish him. Uh, Alilia is going to hold up her hand um, and say, No. Again, for the crimes uh, committed, 
she gestures uh, towards the uh, man with the bird mask and says, I allow you to administer uh, justice in this endeavor. Uh, he is going to nod and say, Guarded by my empire, I will keep uh, I will keep these shards, these fragments hidden. This one does not deserve providence, does not deserve a ring. Instead, an eternal slumber. Even uh, as he has failed in his tasks, he should be bound uh, to his crimes. Should this soul ever walk Ilderon again, uh, should the prison ever be disturbed, he shall have no rest. He shall only know a life and as an echo of his anguish. Lilia is going to nod. I accept this. Uh, and she's going to turn towards uh, Gendwai. She looks at him and says, I charged you with guiding the knowledge of the Sarai. He nods and says, and they sought knowledge, and I gave it to them. And look what they did with it. He nods and says, you bound the arcane to this realm. She's going to exhale and say, I give you a new task then. Um, knowledge, no more. This, everything that they've done, everything with the blood rivers, it is not for the Sarai to explore anymore. Uh, Gendwai is going to nod and say, it will be done, matron. Uh, at which point, um, Renalta is going to look over and say, Are we... Are we getting... Are we removing life on Cedal? Uh, Alilia is going to shake her head and say, No, but all souls on Cedal now... Um, she looks to Gendwai. Back to Renalta. Are your charge. Uh, Amira is going to exhale and say, Good luck with that. Uh, Renalta is going to nod um, at this new responsibility. Uh, at which point, um, Alilia and Alavion are going to uh, leave. Um, Amira is going to uh, walk towards the um, god with the bird mask. Uh, look towards the stone floating in the center. Um, and the other uh, 20 on the floor. Uh, and then to Martlin, who is weeping. Um, she's going to say to him, ensure he suffers. Uh, and then she steps forward, uh, taking the center stone. Uh, she leaves, um, stepping into... Uh, a cloud of rain. Uh, finally, it is just Gindoi, um and uh, the god with the uh, bird mask. Um, Gindoi is going to step forward to Martlin and Neil uh, look up at uh, the god with the bird mask and say, May I have one final word, Delity? After all, I do feel that this is my fault. Uh, he's going to nod. Uh, 
Gendwai is going to kneel and say, Ah, Martlin. Uh, Martlin is going to look up. Uh, he's going to say, You know your death was inevitable. Your failure was inevitable. This council has convened many a times over this unfortunate situation. Did you not think from the start that this is who you were? Mar, the southern reflection, the moon, you are an echo of something more. In death, the end, the final Marlin is going to stop sniffling and say, What? Why are you talking to me? Because your legacy is done. You tried. Rest now. But tis. Uh, she, he gestures towards the stone. He will live on. I hold secrets knowledge, all that and more, a seed hidden away from the gods that none will ever find. You have failed to clean your legacy, but perhaps his daughter will, and maybe someday the Calgarans can become more than just blood-cursed our blood curse accidents tripping through Ilderon. Rest now. Your children will try for a better world. Gendwai uh, uh, stands up, looks towards Delideeth, uh, nods. Uh, Gendwai flashes away. Um, you all recognize that as a teleport spell. He is an arcane caster. Um, at which point, uh, Deladith is going to uh, kneel, uh, placing a hand on Martlin. And he's going to... Uh, Martlin's going to stop and say, Wait, wait, you said that I'll suffer if the soul ever comes back into Ildron. What, what does that mean? Deladith is going to say, after all, it was your goal to fix his mistakes, was it not? To fix your own mistakes? Martlin's going to nod. Um, you will not have a chance to do that again, Nildoran. You have failed. But I will bind you to one who has been abandoned. Uh, each and every time. Uh, one whose fate you cannot change. Uh, you uh, can watch your responsibility to try to alter the paths of fate and know that each and every time you will end back here in our council returning to your eternal rest. Martlin is going to nod and say, I'm sorry I didn't do more. It's too late for words. Sleep, young soul. Uh, he places a hand on uh, Martlin. Uh, Martlin is going to fall unconscious and the memory is going to go dark. Uh, standing in this black space, uh, Martlin is going to uh, emerge, um, walking towards Anderson, and say, This is nothing that you needed to know. Even if we're destined to fail, we have to try.
it's it a weirdly it this gives me uh, I don't it get it doesn't explain anything but it gives me closure I guess that I that I know and maybe maybe it's because I'm stupid but I honestly think that I can end it or at the very least I can end the demon that you created I feel like I'm so close. Uh, Martlin is going to say, my bloodline's cursed for all of, uh, for all of eternity. We're bound to something greater than us. But those who walk this world with fragments of my soul, he shakes his head. They can exist in harmony, but if not in harmony, it wakes me. I get to see this world that I shattered. And I only wish to mend it, but uh, the things that I've done have scarred it beyond repair. But the least I can do is to stop those fragments from doing more. Ambition needs to die. I'd, I'm going to ask a redundant question. I don't suppose those shards can be destroyed. <laughs> that uh, we know of. <laughs> The memory is going to um, back up. Uh, like, hold you, up, hit the rewind button. <laughs> uh, you see um, Deladith standing over uh, Martlin. Um, he turns and looks at the fragments in the center uh, and says, everything in Ilderon uh, it's a plane that was uh, terraformed for life. Um, all of the energy, all of the, all of the flames of souls, uh, every resource is used again uh, for all the beings and um, mortals who uh, spawn in the plane. To destroy those is simply to release their essences to become something new again. But all of that essence is tainted, and whatever new it became would be a, a circle and cycle of destruction. So to answer my own question, no. The best we can do is seal them away and hope no one gets a hold of it. <laughs> that... Actually... What about Stormbreaker? What like, does Merlin know like about Like, Stadora, Stadora's the... the god-killing... sword. All the jokes about Martlin being in love with Calfir are a lot weirder now. There, it, it, yeah, no, it's just... It's not gay for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, is this just a weird form of masturbation? <laughs> um, Martlin is going to uh, think on um, Stormbreak uh, and say it was a gift from the goddess, one of her most powerful creations. It can rend the essences of the divine. Um, he is going to shake his head and say, Fianthros can no more be destroyed um, as much as you uh, can get rid of um, 
or as much as you can get rid of the dust of a crumbling statue. You can throw it out, but it is going to simply be elsewhere in the world. It's, it's it can already be down to its smallest parts. All right. It can be severed. Uh, he looks at the uh, fragments from those other uh, souls, but the crimes that I witness, that I stood by, that I sheepishly um, allowed to happen in my presence. Uh, the weight of those are still mine. As the gods have proven, I can be an independent I can be a soul independent, but uh, he shakes his head. They will not let me roam Ilderon or rest in Providence again. I simply wander the Astral Sea. When I wake, When you wait, hello? <laughs> oh, when I wake. Oh, okay. I don't know. It it sounded like you were going to say more, so <laughs> thought you got cut off. Um, I get. I guess one. Th I think one thing at a time. Um, the the witch of the woods needs to go. That. I think that should take priority. Uh, he's going to nod um, and say, you've seen what happens when um, you mix the arcane and divinity with somebody's planar bindings. The results can oftentimes be permanent, but I respect your resolve to fix such an issue. I've thought on this. Uh, the spell that you seek um, from this uh, old Arcanus, it is a uh, path forward. If we could uh Release Millis. Uh, if we could release Millis from any uh, of the things that are keeping her bound to that forest, perhaps it uh, could give us something to uh, tether onto to put an end to her suffering once and all for all. But it could also risk. Uh, letting her roam through the rest of Ilderon. What if we don't sever her connection to the forest? What if we sever her connection to, to time? If we cut her off from her ability to go back in time to prevent her death, then we sever her connection and kill her for the final time. Uh, he's going to shake his head and say, Melissa's unbound from all things it is uh it is or unbound from all things except for the alien forest it is her uh it is the stain that alavion discussed the one thing that allows her to find her way back uh, to that forest as you viewed all of those threads on Fianthros. She has but a singular one. No matter what version of her, where and when, can find its way into those woods. So then, maybe the issue isn't unbinding her, but rebinding her. Uh... What if we do the same spell, but in reverse? We rebind her to the world. He's going to nod 
and say something like that has never been done before. The only person capable of such magics or that explored such an area. He gestures to the ground and then to himself and say, well, the secret's out. You're looking at him. So, I guess that technically makes me 21 with the conscious. As the peanut gallery do when watching. <laughs> I would say, it's like, there's two people behind me in the memory that I have not acknowledged. <laughs> as far as Anderson knows, they're not there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Ahuik and Liana um, are just watching all of this unfold. <laughs> just stunned <in> silence. <laughs> Wait, Kenneth is there too? Like, what? Uh, mm, uh. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this what? is like... This is forgotten history. No one knows about this except for the gods. <laughs> Meanwhile, Claw is just vibing as a cloud. <laughs> but Claw's a cloud. Anyway, I found out that I'm Calfear's conscience. That's... And you're bad at your job. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that out loud? <laughs> no, player. No. <laughs> Player-wise. No, I mean, like, I, I reckon Anderson recognizes that I'm, I'm my own person, and he's really just... I, I'm kind of the poor soul he hooked a ride to. Um, but, I mean... I, it's like I don't know. It's connection to someone abandoned. So sorry, Anderson. I, you know... It's true, though. I was abandoned. I don't know who my real... I don't know who my biological parents are. Yeah. It could be anyone. Yikes. But also, I've established that Anderson doesn't care. <laughs> he has a great adoptive dad. And that's all that really matters. <laughs> so, I guess it's like... Yeah, I was abandoned, but hey, I, I turned out pretty well. I, I got Rayleigh, my dad, who... Yeah, we've really got, got to and, get you in the mean, Claw's family tree somehow. I don't know. I get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. At the risk of sounding cheesy, it's like I found. You know. I found. You know. Calfir or Martland. Do you prefer Martland, or should I call you Calfir now that I know? Uh, he's going to say Martland, please. Right. <laughs> if uh, any of your, well, actually, is my yeah, he's gonna say, um. Now that your friends know you're receiving counsel from a Shatterer, I would be hesitant on how you proceed with the information you share from me in the future. I... Mm, I mean, I trust Tadora, um, you know, chosen Hi. of... You know, and no Shatterer in training. <laughs> I, you know... Like, she seems to be able to handle things, and Nomis is... I don't know. Novus is like the little sister I never had, so I don't know how involved I want to get her. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Cute. I'm not even there to hear that. I'm sad. I, I don't. I. I mean, you've worked with me. I'm doing my best, but I'm not smart. I. I just go with what my gut tells me. Um, Kenneth is the Kenneth's the thinker. Um, he might have some ideas. Uh, Calfir is going to say there is a, a way. However, you risk uh, he gestures uh, behind him. A council of the gods, the same fate as me. Uh, should you seek it? Is that to find this river of blood I've heard them mention? I was going to say, no, the blood rivers are on your map. I, um, Fianthros is a, the first, uh, demon lord. Um, 
He is a bean of desperation. He bonds with those desperate. It was my great uh, grandfather's desperation to kill uh, the demon that caused it uh, to become so entwined with our bloodline. Uh, he gestures to the rocks and says, These fragments of its soul exist within your world. You know individuals carrying pieces of all of these. Eshes, Asuandria, um, the one I call Ambition. Uh, I'm sorry, did you repeat? Um, I missed it. Who's Ambition again? Uh, Lady Nymira. Lady Nymira. And that's the one that must die. <laughs> he nods um, and says... Demons are pure essence. A um, consolidated and um, corporeal uh, fragment of reality. Emotions made tangible. Concepts made tangible. When they find um, other essences that they resonate with, they can absorb or become a part of it. In our desperation, Fian uh, Th Thros became part of us. It is bonded to us so powerfully that an echo of it resonates in the bloodline of each and every one of the Calgarans. All the Calgarans are capable of demon magic. That is good to know. <laughs> uh, he's going to um, shake his head. But if someone else can reach um, the level of desperation uh, in an effort to uh, slay Theanthros. If it was released in full, it could bond with that uh, being. It could be the tether that gr uh, grounds Millis to something in our world. It could be the thing that lets us rebind her. It's. <sighs> but to summon a demon and feed it to an Eldritch, or to feed it to a formless monster, uh, he shakes his head. A council of gods that haven't been called in millennia would surely uh, come together over such an event. Your actions would be judged. And as you can see, mercy is different when viewed through the eyes of divinity. It's... There's six of us. I have a question. spread the crimes out. <laughs> if, say we do a demon of friendship. Hypothetically. <laughs> Would that be any better? Or is that really just the same crime, but we're switching out the keyword here? You speak of Asuandria? Uh, he's going to nod and say... She could consume the essence as Millis is composed of, as all things are. 
she could also, with training, become a part of those essences. Uh, he's going to shake his head and say, something like her has not existed in Ilderon before. I would be wary of feeding her demonic nature, though. The more... Uh, the more of an essence a demon receives, the more consumed by it they become. Mm. I don't know which one's the worst option. Uh, uh, Martlin I, I, is going to say, for now, destroy ambition before she can, um, before she can shatter this world any further. My legacy is set. It's finished. Let it be lost. In ancient history. Nah, the moment Nomis hears this, she's preserving it forever. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if Nomis will ever know this. Um, the only reason Kenneth does, because he jumped in Anderson's memory. <laughs> you think Kenneth would say no to Nomis asking? I, you know, I don't know. Dude, Kenneth just found the lost shattering. Do you think he's just gonna keep that to himself? <laughs> I don't know. This uh, is some heavy guys, shit. Guys, Anderson will have usually to leave shares all of this shit, and Anderson is like, I steps out of the mind bubble. Yo, Martlin is Calvin. No, it's just Martlin's Martlin. Um, um, I'm that's, calling... that's what he said, but also just. I, I mean, like, more. I need to share some things, but it's like, so anyway, um, I got to witness the last shattering. Anyways, That's some just, traumatic shit. I, would just I like don't really want to talk about it. We now have a canon answer. You can, in fact, have demon Alice and human Alice. <laughs> you could. Thanks. No, it's like, so anyway, <laughs> hey, Stadora, here's, here's like two potential options. A, we, we reform the demon of desperation <laughs> and bind the witch of the forest to it so we could possibly kill it forever. Or your girlfriend's technically a demon. So we your girlfriend could absorb the essence of the time witch and become a new monster that could potentially solve our problems or make it worse. So we're not sure. <laughs> or can <Kenner Rostos. laughs> <laughs> Um, Maybe you could become the demon of desperation, Stadora. It would be a great fit. <laughs> I want to become a demon of desperation. That sounds fun. Uh, Anderson, if you are done exploring this memory, I um, I think I think I'm done exploring the memories. I've gotten more you, than I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> the um, dreamscape is going to fade uh, again. Martin leaving you with that parting goodbye that he always does. Find ambition. New and stop trauma. Her. Uh, good talk. Kill this lady. Bye. <laughs> you know, like good talk. Anyway, um, how to destroy an immortal being that the gods have literally like ripped apart, except for one strand. As you all, um, I don't know. Killing ambition to? seems to be the easy part. <laughs> um, Liana is going to uh, jump back. Uh, in shock and say demon uh, holding her hands between you and her uh, oh that's what she got out of that <laughs> it's going to kneel down and say celestial messenger uh, before you um, Kenneth uh, you wake oh, up oh god already there's a religious schism around me <laughs> I'm gonna stand up hear her call him a demon and just look her in the eye and just tell her when did you stop listening please <laughs> tell me when did you stop listening because uh... liana is going to say you saw it he's guided by a shatterer i ask you again when did you stop listening not all shatterers are demons okay okay was it at the part when a Lilia said, I separated you from the demon. The demon is not influencing you. You are just now 
him. Did you did you did that just go in one ear out the other just go over your head? Uh Liana is going to say and yes, he stood by all of those atrocities still. The gods chose to punish him. Yeah, but without the demon's influence, so I just want to make sure that's clear for you. But yes, and he is punished. Also, I'm not I'm not Martlin. I'm Kenneth, give me a closing vet. argument with a persuasion check. Can I give him, can I help him with that? Yeah, also, I'm not you him. He just kind of, just kind of hitches a ride, as it were. He has not done a single thing to influence Anderson. He has given him suggestions. Anything Anderson chooses to do is his own choice. Anderson has not created monsters and demons. Anderson has been trying to fix the mistakes that have been thrust upon him. And he continues to do that now. Plus, from how it sounds... Roll me that a... history check. Or not also, no, history. everyone <laughs> else <laughs> besides <laughs> Kenneth has no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I was right, going to say, it sounds sorry. more like torture for uh, Martland than it is for Anderson. It, well, that's because it is. <laughs> sorry, what would you say, Brandon? Uh, roll me the persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Hell yeah. Let's see how that goes. Uh, I believe in you. No. Hell yeah. Liana is going to uh, hold up a hand. I don't think I've heard crazier stories but 16 years ago, a Shatterer was walking our world, and now an echo of one is being controlled. Uh, she's going to look towards Ahuith and say, I trust to Lachwin's plan. Uh, oh, I'm the messenger and... of the guy. Okay. <laughs> Ahuith is going to nod and say, I will call the trial of uh, Waves to begin if. Uh, all of the signs are met. Uh, upon which, um, Ahuik is going to uh, get up from her kneel and walk over to Nomis. Um, Thanks. Here we go. Uh, Nomis, um, did you want to explore any memories uh, before? Uh, um. I think we already discussed that I was watching when I was first taken through the oh, rift yeah, and saw yep. bias I, And I told you, yeah, uh, that person yeah. is dead. Uh, no? What? Wait, not dead in a different plane. Okay! <laughs> Sorry wait, about is Tyus that. dead? <laughs> dead. <laughs> wait. Um, Alright, so uh, she's going to step over towards uh, Nomis, and she's going to wave her hand at the miss, um, it fading. Nomis, you return to consciousness from your memories. And, um... Oh, wait a second. So basically, I look at Kenneth, it's like, so you saw all of that. Yes. We'll talk what? about that later. I mean, I guess that saves me explaining. Mm -hmm. Kind of saves us from you explaining. <laughs> uh, hey, my turn. She is going to um oh uh, no miss you're awake um before you is uh Ahuik, um and uh liana uh, and the rest of your party has uh, shown up um oh. Ahuik Hello, is everyone. going to say i am the Asitar of the mist yandar uh Ahuik mistar we have accepted you as emissaries um, of the gods that moved the clouds and the waves. Uh, we believe um, celestial tidings uh, come with your arrival. Your Why? companion has gone to beseech them so that we may in enter their domain. The trial of waves requires us to bring back a blessing uh, from one of them. Among the gods of this world that claim the heavens and the seas, the waves and the tides, which of them should we beseech? 
You may make your case. Mia is the only true god of the ocean. All of my people know that. Uh, she is going to look towards Liana and say, If I call the trial of waves to begin, uh, it will be a trial for you, Mia. Uh, Liana is going to nod. Uh, she's going to gesture for you to rise. Okay. Uh, Ahuik. Mumis just looks really confused. It's, it should be. It's a very confusing thing happening right now. Yeah, she's like, I was I, just If you are paying attention to Anderson, Anderson just kind of has this dead-eyed look at the moment. He, It was a lot to take in. <laughs> oh, also, there's just Claw. Lifeless. Claw's <laughs> uh, yeah. just dead in the corner. Ahuik is going to turn to everyone and say, um, we've accepted you as messengers. If your companion returns with the blessing to enter the domain um, of the gods, then the trial of waves will begin. Uh, until his return, uh, she gestures, the Jari Death Monastery um, can be used as your home. Please. Uh, every um, ounce of our hospitality is extended to you. She bows. I kind of would rate this as, um, I'd like to ask, what does this trial of wave entail? And do we need to be active participants in it? Uh, Liana is going to, um, look and say, it's a, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it's a race. Um, the first to receive the uh, blessing um, ordained from the uh, gods and to bring it back. Uh, the water of our world is connected. Um, Talakwin swims the seas, swims the lakes, swims the skies. We followed uh, Talakwin's currents uh, wading into uh, the uh, Ziwa Lake. We go on um, travels through the uh, Astral Sea with our spirits to where Talakwin leads. The first to arrive and the first to return becomes Asatar. The first to arrive and return? What if someone arrives first, but then doesn't return first? Uh, she's um, going to shake her head and say, well, then they are not Asatar. But then the other person will have not arrived first, but will return first. So they aren't Asatar either, so who becomes Asatar? Uh, she's um, going to say, Talakwan guides one, and then guides uh, whoever else uh, comes through. If one does not make it through the journey, they likely uh, shakes her head. Well, the trials are not always safe. Ahuik is going to say, I've completed the trial of waves before. I was the only one willing uh, to go into Talakwin's domain. It's dangerous, but I've navigated uh, the currents of the heavens. Liana, you actually never completed a trial. It will be my first. I've never had to call one before. So the only people that will be during the trial will be those who wish to become the new Asatar. Uh, correct? She's going to nod and say any of our tribe uh, or any of our Yandar can become Asatar. 
Uh, Liana is going to nod and say, The Miss Yandar is unique in that aspect. Most Yandars allow any individual to compete. Um, but uh, the gods only allow our tribe into their domain. Okay. So my main concern is still, once it gets started, do we need to stay? We need to return back to Arter, Arter Sarai. Uh, Ahuek is going to shake her head and say, once it's begun, you can stay if you'd like, but you do not have to. You are free. Your responsibilities, your message from Tulakwan has been delivered and received. Okay, so we just have to wait on Claw. Ugh, that was a lot. All right. He's just gonna like rub his forehead. Just, oh god. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, now you know what I deal with. Try explaining that. <laughs> um. How about I? I'm gonna let the party role play with each other for thirty minutes, and then we'll pick up with Claw next session. All right. Okay. So I guess uh, you guys have free reign over the monastery while you wait for Claw to return. Okay, so I'll look at the rest of the party and say we should find a place to sit, and I'll explain what happened in Anderson's head. Yeah, because you guys haven't told me exactly what happens in his head. I a not lot. A lot. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Um, I always just thought it was like. A monkey um, clashing two um, what was it symbols? Oh, two symbols. It's like oh, there was a lot of empty. It would be <laughs> so much easier if that were actually the case. Now that's canon. <laughs> I like Sergey. I envy your uh, symbol. Uh, oh, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're you're sin. Yeah. Sig. Sig. I envy your simple mind. <laughs> <laughs> With that, without multiple people in it. Okay. Well, the amount of things I was thinking of doing to you after that comment. So I guess once we can find a place, if there is no objection yeah. or anybody wants to do anything, um, I'll sit down and, with Anderson's help, uh, try to weave the tale of the Council of the Gods. <laughs> what? Well, it's what? Like I. I will my I will mind link you and I I specifically want to leave out the part where um Martlin is Kelfir. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um I feel like that's a, a lot. To, I will have to figure out a way to spin that revelation or what why Martlin is with you. We'll just say because he was with the accomplice. B basically Which... he was like, You were the chosen one to prevent this and you failed. Just make him bigger assholes. Um, so, uh, Kenneth, um, mm -hmm. your party has no reason to suspect you of lying, uh, but if there are logical fallacies, um, within your, uh, description of this, go ahead and give me a, a deception check, uh, right which I'm going to record and I'll use this for the future of the campaign for the DC. Um, if this is challenged. Ulster okay. is going to know instantly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Stradora eats up your bullshit for a while because she just doesn't have time. <laughs> hey, hey, I got more important things. Oh, so for the sake of it, if passive insight was a thing, you're right. <laughs> Um, I don't use passive insight <laughs> except in egregious failures of situations. Uh, all right. That said, um, you guys can continue uh, telling the tale. I don't know if you want to do it in character or you want to. Um... I mean, it's probably better to just. We'll just say we told them because that's a lot of information and. Uh... Like if they, they want to, like, I guess we'll have, like, if they want to speak up or ask questions at any point, we can do that. Is that all right? 
Uh, yeah, um, I will also give the party um, additional uh, areas that they can make um, insight checks on, on what was, uh, or not insight checks, um, history or religion checks on. Uh, you guys uh, did not identify one of the gods that was there. But um, we heard the got, name. Um, no, you got... Uh, Oh, I used the wrong name, actually. Um, Double deception. Yeah, I won't tell you what name I used wrong. Uh, you guys did miss identifying one god. Uh, there's There was one more person there that you guys did not know who that was. We could just um, say that's who we think it is, but yeah, you know, I guess... we're wrong. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> say, so say I assume that he used Deladith wrong and that it was actually Diodith, but... Uh, I'll, yes. I'll just say the names and describe them and then... You know that get, uh, we we can use that as the insight or history check. Is okay. that sorry, Brandon? Uh, yeah. Um, so if if the party wants to try and add any more information, uh, you guys can on that. Um, Eshes told you guys more information about the stones. Um, that you guys have as players. I don't know if you guys remember that or not for your notes. Um, but. Uh, you guys can insight or not insight check you guys can history check that and I'll give you more information if you want um, as the story is going on um, the name Elevion was used when referring to the moth lady uh, the angel um, oh what was that angel's name Mame told you guys the lady who runs uh the lady who runs um, Kaimanaji is in a league of her own, um, kind of outside the rules of uh, that other gods have to play by, and did tell you her name. Um, well, I guess I probably should have made you guys history check that before I said that. Uh, is no, there I anything that. else that comes up? Um that's worth history i guess if you guys have any questions i will tell you if you can roll a history check about it so this is in character so hold up Gendui mentioned that he has a daughter yeah calfir had a daughter i'm assuming that's how the line continued i assume he had a brother Maybe there's more to it then. Because, like, I don't know, your second soul gay lover having a child seems kind of pertinent. Also, that actually kind of ruins my whole, you know, use his homosexuality as a cudgel because that definitely means that he's, you know. What? Hmm, what's wrong? What did I miss? <laughs> a, a lot, apparently. Don't worry. Uh, alone. Love, have you been here for the past couple minutes? No, I sent a message that I did be right back. Oh, sorry. Um, so, uh, you guys have been given free reign at the monastery. Um, you found a alcove to talk alone in. Anderson and Kenneth have gone through and explained everything that they just saw. Uh, they have, rather than saying Martlin is Calfier. They said that Martlin has been punished because he was um, complacent in Calfir's crimes. Uh, otherwise, um, they've uh, given you guys all the information, and I am letting, if you have any questions on stuff that you have heard, uh, I am letting you guys roll history checks, um, and I will connect the knowledge in case it's come up in anything that has happened in the campaigns for you guys. I wish they had read my mind. Just to, co just to double check. Yes. So you, we, you noted that you would use the god's name incorrectly during that. You, was there a, sep a second unidentified god? There was one uh, on, there was one unidentified god there. All one of the others mask? were identified. No, nope, the one with the mask I... uh, was Diamond E. Oh, Is there any way that I could check that? I mean, 
I don't know if that's knowledge I would have, let alone if they described it well enough for me to click that part of my brain in. Um, yeah, uh, on a history check. Uh, the gods were identifiable at different theses of history checks. Uh, from Kenneth and nope. Anderson uh, doing their best to describe it to you, um, you can try and think on it. Can we all do that? Yes, everybody has the opportunity to. Um, I thought that you also had the chance with religion. Yeah, that makes uh, you can also so. roll religion. My, my bonus isn't any different in religion. because for Hi, scholar here. here. Yeah. It's an intelligence check. I'm not that smart. Um, no miss. Uh, you are going to um, be aware the other uh, god that was there, just with the few descriptions Anderson and Kenneth are able to give, match up with some of your culture's ancient descriptions of Delity. Cool. I'll explain that. Isn't uh, Delity the one that eated himself out of existence? Uh, no. Delity, um, is, uh, one of the servants of, uh, Alilia that, and this is knowledge to Nomis. Um, Deladith is one of the servants of Alilia, uh, and he unfortunately got into more scuffles with the other servants. Uh, he's one of the powerful gods along the lines of Renalta, Gendoi, uh, Dimedy. Um, is that one of those early ones that she made contracts with? Yes. Uh, nice. Deladith specifically is responsible for, um, death in, in the world. Yeah, I'll relay a kind of abridged version of that. You know, I, I know, I know we're talking about, you know, lost history that only I have access to. Um, we talked at some point about getting a uh, greater restoration. My soul still hurts. We'll we're working on it. that, Anderson. Jesus, you keep all the God counsel in your brain, but forget what happened literally yesterday. My soul hurts too. At least you have two souls to work with. That was part of the main reason I was asking them if we could just leave Anderson. So we just have to wait for Claw to get back, tell them what they but, need to do, wait, and we can but, be on our way. I think we need to cover something that's equally, more, equally if not more important. What is a lawgiver, and why was Anna fucking Ostel there? That is a great question that I wish I had answers to. Who's Anna Ostel? She was the sage of ardor and one of its high council people she's wasn't... also a devil <laughs> yeah I was like, like wasn't she a devil so i'm not yeah. shocked that she's that old it's just kind of weird to find out that you know she was quite literally there she Part witnessed the a lost piece of history and therefore knew about it the entire time that we and slash our parents have known her you know i remember when we met her she tried to she witnessed the birth of the pieces that made up the Princess of Ardor Sarai. You know, actually, this explains a lot. When I met her, she uh, she tried to convince me to separate um, my souls. I'll do that. Saying that yep. she had the yep. power to do that. Yeah, but wh why is that pertinent? Like, what's the big deal about separating yourself from the useless forlorn lover of your shatterer friend because her job was to erase from history this exact event she yeah, didn't but, want us to know this <laughs> yeah but i mean like he's not calfir so like what's the big deal well he knows the story of calfir there's power in stories i guess but i mean it's <laughs> not like he can do the dark <laughs> magic or whatever I, uh, well, Are we sure he God, can? Anderson is terrible at... I'm here, I'm just gonna roll this. You're trying, it's okay. Uh, did you accidentally do... called him on his shit. <laughs> oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Oddly composed for one. <laughs> <do it. laughs> Straight-faced. Straight-faced, trying not to... Internally, like... <laughs> I mean, only one other person knows it. 
Well, I'm not exactly going to be in a rush to go to Red Axe to get that information from her. No, I was like, if you wanted to insight that, I'll... I'll so, you <laughs> slightly related but unrelated, you know it's problematic if we kill Lady Nymira. Jeez. Um, before you guys get off the subject, I do want to poke at um, one thing. Uh, you guys can roll... Um, you guys can roll uh, history on the title Lawgiver. Uh, it has came up before, and Nomis would also have information on it if. Uh, Ooh, I tried. Hit me. <laughs> we'll wait for everybody. Um, uh, history. History. Uh, yeah, history. Uh, I'll allow it for religion for Nomis if you want. I um, feel like I wouldn't have any. Uh, no, Anderson. Uh, Stradora, at the 10 mark, um, you don't know much about the Lawgiver. You do know that Fian Irala uh, hates them. Uh, she mentioned it in your guys' negotiations. Um, uh, Kenneth, same at the uh, 10 mark. Uh, moving up to the uh, 15 mark, um, for both uh, Kenneth and Nomis. Um, Nomis, you have uh, read something about uh, Jahara Utha. Um, the lawgiver is the uh, essentially someone given deific powers from Renolta. Uh, a con. It is what makes the devil so uh, lawful. Uh, they function by a very specific contract. Um, they find mischievous ways to break, or, or rather to function around those contracts, but all, all within it. The person who runs uh, Jahara Utha and holds the contract with Renolta is known as the Lawgiver. Uh, Kenneth, um, you are also uh, going to be aware of this. You can put it together from your interactions with Fian Irala and how she does not want to go home and be jailed by devils anymore. Um, the lawgiver likely being some god-level leader of uh, uh, fiends in the afterlife. Spinora asked where the lawgiver is? Yeah. yeah I, I asked her. So, so she basically runs Jahara Utha, which is what where all the the devilly people hide out? Or at least she did. So what you're telling me is that Anna Estelle, former sage of Arter Sarai, former high council woman of Arter Sarai, that Anna Estelle was queen of the goddamn devils? Why in the bridge was she an Arter? As a sage. Dude, I don't know. I don't. I'm not from there. You guys are from there. I mean, anybody hang out with every, that woman? Considering everything that's happened, a lot of stuff happens in Arter. You know, like I mean, I don't know. Does she have any friends? Oh, um, you know what? I'll hit, I'll hit Kenneth with this one, uh, for that fifteen. Um, probably cascading all this knowledge into place. The daughters of Gendwai specifically attacked the castle to remove Anna as a threat from their plans. I really remember that. They did not go after Osmandria. They were a hundred percent there for her. You know, throw throw throwing it out there, guys. We happen to know very high power, a high level you know, mage, you know, speed out arcane Nemeiser elf mom. I going to say, you're too nice. I just do okay, it. Yeah, now this is kind of like twirling her hair. <laughs> oh, I was like, no, I was like, do we acknowledge that? Or okay, okay, that real, okay, real quick, real quick, because even though I tend to be very abrasive, I don't want to be unintentionally harmful to people's feelings. You're both uh, lovely and good at your jobs. 
Uh, but I'm not talking about either of you. In fact, I'm not talking about the person that isn't here that I'm dating. I'm talking about you. There because she is none of you can do a gate spell. Yet. Well, actually, Nemeister, can you? Uh, Nemeister is going to scratch her head and say, Where'd I put that page in my spell book? No, I, you know, I think it's in the other spell book that got burned in Undar. Nemeister, you could just say no. I'm not going to think any less of you. She's going to say can't cast any that's, level spells that's, yet. That's fine. I can't cast anything above three. I You'll mean, get there someday. can't cast teleport, so, you know. You know? You're an <laughs> invaluable part of this uh, contingent of people. I'm just saying that if I need somebody to magically pluck a devil out of Red Axe, I'll probably go talk to Deal. Would you like me to speak with Dila? Not yet. I want to get our story straight before we bring that up. You know, this was knowledge that was... It feels quite, like a thing I should be able to put in a letter. Quite intentionally lost. And I don't know how people would feel if we started bringing that up, that we know it. You know, we gotta go back to a little guy eventually. Maybe we just tell that to her right person. Mm -hmm. It, it really does feel like an in-person conversation rather than back and forth. <laughs> Dear, I don't think I don't think I, I don't think I, I witnessed the it. end of a world. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure I, could put it I, I have a here. question for Kenneth and Anderson. Um, as you guys are talking about sharing all of this knowledge, uh, did I, did you guys said you shared everything? Like... Did you talk about the parts where the god specifically tried to remove this from history? I'm bringing that up now. Okay, go of, for it. Of like, you know, this was knowledge very intentionally lost. They so, don't want you. They don't want anyone to know this. Like, so that explains the lost age. I'm confused about something though. I mean, I'm confused about a so lot. Also, things, we also, frankly. like, curated the story. So I'd say, like, we didn't tell everything, no, no. everything, but we told what we felt was important. <laughs> I thought, I always thought Gendouai was some weird extra planar interloper. He's, like, on our pantheon. He was told to do things. It's lost history for a reason. But, but, I mean, like... I don't know, it's it's weird to think about the fact that, like, you know, he was at a council of our gods as a member of said council and right. not smote, even though, right. like, within a thousand or so years after that, Dila's yeeting him out of our plane. So something happened. Something we don't know about. Because Dila's probably, Dila's probably hiding it. Also, he's, he's demon or something? I'm still stuck on this whole... Calfir apparently had a daughter thing. I mostly There's because a... mostly because Gendawai getting weird, creepy, and a little you know like you know vaguely I... ominous in relation to the phrase "daughters" triggers me. You know, I like this is important, and I feel we should know. But I'm also afraid that we now have a target for the gods on our backs now. They well, look, the gods can punish me uh, directly. After I've sent them Lady Nymira. I was like, that which, was that which, was the one thing that was very precise. I need to stress that is going to be problematic. Mar Martlin also agrees that uh Lady Nymira, who is also ambition, must die. Yes, and every time I've told you that that's problematic, you seem to just double back on the first part of my sentence. I've She's the reason they can. I don't know. Uh, it just fills me with Nemeister's rage, and then things die. And say, "Who's Lady Nymera? Someone you She's know a... intimately?" No, not the mm. way you're going to phrase that. But she did mess. You know, actually, I do know her intimately. She puppeted my body. Huh? You know how there's like the death mist everywhere? Like she's responsible for that. Which is why it's problematic if we kill her. 
How do you think a gaggle of arcane empowered elf bitches are able to control a god? With the power of ambition? Yes, though if we kill her, Gendui, currently occupying the uh, mortal vessel known as Ostendria, uh, isn't actually going to be under their will. I'm not quite sure what the body of a 16-year-old with the power of a god is capable of, but I sure as hell would rather have it on timeout. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm going to mute my mic. We've, we've got... So, we're going to cleanse Stormbreak. Stormbreak, the sword that kills gods. Well, allegedly. It was made to kill one god, and he's still very much alive. I'm just saying, you know, you're asking how we deal with that, and I think we're kind of holding the solution. We, we don't need... know what an untethered Gendui, admittedly still in Osandria's body, is capable of doing. It's a wild card. Also, we really need to talk about the fact that I need to get this dark water out of me. That's... that's true. That's... Because we're all like, yay, we're going to cleanse Stormbreak, and then Ambition can inhabit my body and force me to wield it against my will. I mean, I know your mic is muted at the moment, so you might be away, but we talked about the dark water. I'm familiar with it from living underwater. Is Do I know of any way to cleanse it? Do you yeah, know of any one. way to cleanse it? Uh, can you give me like three minutes to think on it? Yeah. Nomis is doing the same. She's just sitting in the back thinking. But apparently I also need it to, like, actually wander around Kaimanaji. So I might be stuck in a weird situation where I have to be temporarily vulnerable to complete what I want to do with this sword. I have a dumb solution Ooh. to that. But it's a dumb solution to that. Uh, Nomis. Yes. There is a way um, to do it. Uh, it's going to be a history check from you, DC 17. Easy. I mean, that's actually pretty hard for most people. Oh um, my gosh. You are going to think on it. Um, yeah, you heard something about it. Uh, it deals with ancient Mirai magic and some of the ancients in your culture. Um, however, they're so strange in their habits and what they do. Um, you focusing on jobs and people's professions, um, you didn't really spend much time with them. Uh, it's foggy. Uh, you can try again later. But yeah, I ask the ancients Safan? know how to do it. Can I send a sending to Safan and ask her from Saf my old Yondar? Fawn. Uh, remind She's me which one She's a cultural specialist. Um, yeah, her? I'm gonna roll a I'll roll a history check for her. If I can't pass it, I'll get someone else to. <laughs> Will she Who's talk to you? Reading? You're a, you're a surface dweller now. Yeah, I've talked to them a couple of times now. They don't hate me. I just can't come home. It's like, hey, great to hear from you. Also, you're banished. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm very obviously a surface dweller now. She dropped it's her very much the They very much go to the Dilo and Rona school of banishment. Like, look, you're not allowed in the country, but if I do see you, I'll ask how you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Every so yeah. often, I'll technically wage a war on you, but that's if you get really out of hand. I can't go home. I wouldn't fit in anymore. Nomis can start, she's starting to read, she lost her accent, she knows surface words now, she has surface items. Her hair is dry, she wouldn't fit in. Alright, she's gonna come back and she's gonna be that annoying exchange student who says mm. Barcelona. With a <laughs> lip. <laughs> um, Alright, Nomis, send me the sending of what you send. Uh, you can message it to me. Um, oh shoot, I didn't Rob, I don't know, know if you okay. remember what you were saying, but you were saying something. Uh, I mostly noted that I need to get this dark water out of me and that I have a dumb possible solution to the problem of what to do about this whole storm break thing. That was pretty much it, because then I was waiting for rolls. Oh, uh, okay. Um, was there anything else that needed to be rolled? 
Does no. anyone else want to try? Okay. Um, no, Miss, how about you send me that sending then? Uh, if anyone I'm working else... on it. I can't open my eyes right now. Okay. Uh, or you can say it if nobody else has anything else they want to say, and then we'll end here for the night. <laughs> um, I guess probably something like, hey, Siphon, <laughs> what's up? I remember there used to be stories of cleansing dark water. Do you remember any of them? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Unrelated. <laughs> uh, let me see for a second. I'm also not telling anyone I'm doing this in the background. Yeah. Yeah, we'll never know that it's not. Mind. We'll never know that you're not the smartest. Exactly. I admitted it once and learned my lesson. Well, anyways, while we're waiting, hey, no Meister. Um, what did you do to get on here. Leanna's bad side? Uh, oh, she's going to. Uh, it's a oh the uh, sigil uh, gave Liana um, control of the Miss Yandar. Uh, specifically, they wanted the uh, Jari Death Monastery um, to help secure power within the Clutch. Uh, I may or may not have been a part of the forces in her rise to power and I don't normally abandon people but they were extraneous circumstances and may have left the contingent of agents that were helping her and they might have died to assassins but she still got the position Meister I'm sending a worrying trend in your behavior and I'm just going to let you know I can't get back to uh, Cedal on a boat uh, I physically can't. She's going to. Um, I was going to say, sure you can, and then I remembered what you're holding. <laughs> yeah. And say, if we got to uh, get out of here, I can teleport um, almost a dozen people. If I'm running, you're all running with me. I'm I didn't glad leave that we under our alone. Would I took kill a, you if you left us. <laughs> took a good number of Arcanists with me. Okay. I'm just saying. I literally can't take a boat. The magic sword on my back prevents winds from pushing sails. We don't have Lumilia to fight Gale Song about it. Nope. Yeah, that's true. We don't have a cleric this time around to cleanse. <laughs> and the last time I purified this sword, so maybe that didn't happen, uh, my body was puppeted by an evil cultist, because that's just apparently how my life is now. A little upset that her divine Kalfir powers circumnavigate my ability to avoid being charmed. It's one of the, like, 16 reasons I'm going to chop her up into pits. You hmm. should tell your mom about your body being puppeted. I think it'd be funny. No. No. She would, she would immediately go on a crusade. Exactly. Yeah, my mom's already caused enough international incidents for a week. Next week, done. We'll put it on the maybe list. Oh, wait. I don't have to ask your permission. I could tell her anytime I wanted. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. What a, such, what a betrayal of my truck. Of two peoples! I can tell anyone anything at any time. You cannot stop me. And you met her. I met her. Well, I mean, like, it wouldn't take us long to figure... How many people this party have sending? Let's count. One, and we're done. <laughs> well, it depends on what you... No, I bet you Nemeister can send sending. Ossandria can. And I bet you your right. mom is the one watching you. Uh, Lumilia, er, Lumilia, sorry, no miss. Um, you're going okay. to get us sending back. Um, she responds with, uh, you stay, and this is in, uh, Primordial, um, the Aquan, uh, version, or dialect. Um, you stayed on the surface and entangled yourself with the deaths. Moonsingers can give their soul cleansing your water. Few are willing these days. 
Cool. Thanks, Sathon. Ooh, that's a very backhanded, uh... <laughs> nah, Sathon's just like that. Okay. So a Moonsinger would have to die? You say that No, the Moonsinger would have to no. give it to you. A what? Just clarifying, that, that's code for they'd die. There's not a lot of Moonsingers left. Um, I'm I'm not gonna relay that Shpredora. <laughs> be the first mermaid we've seen die. <laughs> Won't be the last. When a mermaid dies, your tree. Well, it's not crazy. just a mermaid. It's a moon sinker. No, Miss is a moon sinker. No, she's <laughs> not. Uh, well, no, Miss, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> no. All right. Um, how do you all feel about ending there? I feel good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah we will pick up next session with Claw. Um. I had the opportunity, E, to do something bigger with you, so I took it, and um, I'm sorry for sidelining you this session. Trust. I was supposed to send you ascending, but we didn't get to it. That's fine. You can send me ascending next session at some point of, like, whenever Lumilia is just like, oh, wait, wait, didn't they say that he they have to go to the Astral Sea and visit it? Isn't that basically what Claw's doing right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, isn't that what Claw is pseudo doing? Is he pseudo doing the trial of waves? Oh. Oh god. Alright. Um so Anderson. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god. Yeah, I was thinking. Please uh, thing. understand why I have to grab your campaign journal every I thought every you were just session. like, I'm gonna have to find some obscure information, just like, oh, by the way, here's the secret to the to what the gods have been hiding all these years. Uh, that wasn't, that was not remotely what I was looking for. I was just like, I wanna know where the pretty rock is. No, man. <laughs> they remade, they remade Kalfir without Demon, and then made him his childhood best friend. That's fucked. That... <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's true. It's like, oh, we've already done it, by the way. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, Never trust oh. anybody, not even yourself. I'm gonna give you. I I don't know. I think that's like the last moment I had planned before fighting. Um. It's like you didn't need to know this. It was like, Lady Nomira. I didn't. You're right, but also, I. Now, like I said, it's like I. This weirdly gives me closure. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I think your personal story is complete. There's two things missing from your I... personal story, uh, and I would just tell this to you as a player. Um, you know Lady Nymira killed Martlin uh, when he was trying to um, convince her to stop. Uh, and that event is still missing. And how you and Martlin got bonded is the only other one missing, but none of those. I, I, mean, I don't really care how Martlin got bonded to me. Yeah, I do. I so, care a little bit. I, I think... care a little more about the Lady Nymira one, but that's just because I'm wondering what poor and like what pre Anderson got smoked for that. Maybe this I is care. how I find that out needs who to my be parents are. the beginning are. of your book. Um, I think I'll. Mark, your personal story is complete. Um, well, nope, nope. Cleansing Millis. So, that I is... I mean, yeah, but it's like, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, that is your also, goal. Also, have y'all noticed we have a lot of problems that are all solved by the spell that we can presumably only cast once? Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of like, that's kind of a big, a big, uh... It's a big moment of, uh... Of, well, it sucks do? that most of your problems won't be solved because we're saving the world. And you're like, but Stradora, and then Stradora kind of glares puts her hand on sword bank and says it's, it's, horror. it's a big problem that you guys don't get to solve your problems with this spell because we're saving the world <laughs> well i feel like my like mine's a little different because i found out it's like well actually we don't need to set we can't we don't want to sever her she's already been severed we need to bind her um do i give you guys uh experience for martlin introducing a really bad idea 
Oh yeah, yeah. the demon thing, which is like I. You know what? No, yeah, I, I will. I will give you experience for that because that was actually incredibly creative of you, Jackal of Martlin. Said, oh. "Well, Fianthros binds to people when they get desperate." You know, Millis can't be bound to anything. Maybe this thing can. And you're just like, what about our demon? So I will There's give like, you story question. experience for that. We that... have a demon. <laughs> not I eating was... Millis to my girlfriend. I was not planning a tragic don't end be for this campaign. <laughs> but... oh, I found a tragic end. <laughs> but introducing the tragic option. I don't Millis to um, <laughs> Oscar and Andrea. Rob, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um... It may, it may or may not happen. I just think that that's interesting storytelling. Um, and was there any other major story moments revealed tonight? We found a way to tragically kill your girlfriend <laughs> again. <laughs> the entire uh, campaign has basically been trying to avoid the tragic end of my girlfriend. <laughs> Nomis accidentally gave me a more work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will give Nomis um, experience for... Um, sending a uh, the right tidings or well, not the right but like uh, setting what God needs to be beseeched for the trial of waves yeah so in hindsight I really wish he had looked in my mind so that these random people didn't have all this information about that's very true of like like oh, there no. are things well, in my memories I don't want anyone to see but I think in my just thinking of Tyus it wouldn't have been a problem for uh, for Liana, um, and for Ahuit, for the most part, most players know that these are very good characters. One is lawful good and one's chaotic good. They want the best in different ways, so not the worst people to have poking around through your mind. I'm actually a little shocked here that Liana's good. Yeah, she's, the sigil's chaotic good. They kill people to keep regions stable and to help nations prosper. It feels like neutral. Fair enough. Like, uh, the what answer was I going to give about the ocean gods other than the also, only one I worship? Also, Leanna's never been presented as like a member of the sigil. Uh, and this, so, so it just, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I know I'll that she's propped up it. by the sigil. The sigil would definitely could definitely prop up an evil person if it like, you know, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I'll talk about it after the session. Um, 3,000 experience for tonight. Oh, um, are we still rolling? I thought we were done. <laughs> no, we're just finishing up with experience and mm -hmm. inspiration. Uh, I'm going to give... Um, I, I just think Anderson inspiration tonight. Like, just... I don't know. It's a big Anderson sure. night. Uh, do you want normal inspiration or do you want me to roll on the table? Uh, let's roll for it. Okay. Oh, okay. uh, normal. <laughs> All right. Um, and the illusion of choice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, your next session, uh, I guess we'll be shooting for the 14th of August. If anything's got to change, just keep me updated. Uh, peace out, homies.